a juvenile or a police line type doing the same thing. This is going to release another body. Okay, we covered each other there. The uh, second guy, no one, suspended license for class D. Okay, uh, my top constable will be in the body shortly. Once again, we'll be in the middle of the finest. More and more people with mental illness are in the community and they're being forced out onto the streets, on the sidewalks, on the playgrounds, in the parks. And, you know, certain behavior involves confrontations with the police. These aren't the felons, they're not people who have violently committed crimes or hurt other people. They're really committed nuisance related offenses that typically end up being arrested for lack of better options to police officers. Police really had only two options when they were confronted with an emotionally disturbed person in the community. They could either arrest them, which required hours and hours of paperwork and really resulted in nothing productive for the person, or they could bring the person to the hospital, in which case they often had to sit with the hospital personnel for many hours, which was very expensive to the police and very unsatisfactory to the person receiving services. We were arresting people with mental illness for committing minor offenses, and we were running into the same people over and over again. So it was a reoccurring problem, a Band-Aid approach, with no proactive plan in place. The number of arrests that were being made by the Framingham Police Department of mentally ill individuals in the community for minor crimes, nuisance offenses, that were really just symptoms of their mental illness, um, was something that the police department was uncomfortable with and something that mental health operations in town was also uncomfortable with. The jail diversion program was a really great idea of Deputy Chief Craig Davis of the Framingham Police Department. He was the commander of the SWAT team, which he was just constituting at the time and he thought it would be a good idea for the negotiators on the SWAT team to have collaboration and training from a psychiatrist like me, because very often the people who were hostage takers or otherwise engaged with the SWAT team turned out to be psychiatrically or emotionally disturbed. I wanted to replicate the model that we had established and succeeded at with, for the SWAT team to have a clinician at least be with the police officer on these calls and situations involving somebody with mental illness. And he got the additional uh, excellent idea that if they invited us to actually house our clinician in the police station, it would be much more likely that, the, that our clinician would become integrated into the police team. This is exactly what happened. Uh, any call uh, in which a, there's a patient with a mental health issue, um, there's only so much training a police officer has. And to have these people on scene with us in the cruisers, driving around with us, um, is such an advantage for us. We can have these JDP clinicians who are riding around with us come on scene into these people's houses, into these people's environments, uh, and see exactly what these people are dealing with and how they're living. And that way the clinician can make a decision based on what they see and what they hear from the person. Whereas when it comes to us having to make these decisions, like I said, we're not really trained for it. Whereas the JDP clinicians are able to come in, make a quicker decision, uh, make the proper phone calls and the proper decisions that need to be made to get these patients the help they need quicker and to get us, the police officers, back on the street uh, where we're more effective. The police department traditionally prior to JDP arrived on the scene of a call where a person may be mentally ill and looked at the symptoms and fit them into a behavior pattern that would either allow an arrest for a criminal charge or if there was nothing arrestable they would be transported to the hospital. And in the past, what we ended up doing was spent, we spent more time on uh, treating people in the street than time policing the, the streets. In the housing authority, we have many um, uh, tenants down here that from, do have some issues. And from time to time, uh, we need the services of the jail diversion program. It gives the opportunity for the police to have an alternative of someone going to jail or someone uh, getting some help uh, at, a, at a hospital or at a facility. And uh, more times than not, uh, the policeman would much rather have someone transported to the hospital or get involved in the program than taking them to jail. Myself as a police officer, I've been working within the school system for nine years now. And the kids know who I am. They know I'm there to help them. And if I don't have to arrest them, I prefer not to and use 
the jail diversion program. The kinds of children I refer to the jail diversion program are children with emotional needs and they're disruptive and they keep on getting sent down to the student referral center. They'll eventually end up either in jail, locked up, and they could even be expelled from school. I feel the jail diversion program has helped all of the schools within Framingham and it helps the kid immediately instead of waiting for an appointment two or three days later the response is immediate so it really works well for the school system and it makes the parents and the children much happier. The Jail Diversion program has three components. The first component is a training component so we provide an ongoing training for the patrol division and the supervisors into the signs and symptoms of mental illness what types of medications are appropriate, basic de-escalation techniques. The second component is a monthly operations meeting where we get together with all the key stakeholders from the program and talk about the program, talk about what the calls have been, talk about any problems that may have arisen and also do some case planning around our most difficult or frequent callers. The third component and in my opinion the most important component is the ride along program. That is where there is a clinician based in the car responding with patrol officers to calls for service. Being able to respond to the community at the time of the 911 call is in my opinion one of the most um, important aspects of the program and, and really lends to the program's success. Uh, initially it was a little uh, worrisome having a clinician ride with you in your cruiser. Uh, you weren't really sure, totally different backgrounds, total different uh, you know, perception of what's going on. After a while, you got to know them, you got to realize that, you know, they are there just to help and they had uh, no intention of getting involved in, in calls. It didn't concern them a lot of times. They'd be there on calls and obviously not every call is a situation for the jail diversion program, but they, uh, you know, they became very good at standing back, knowing when to get involved, when to ask if they want to be involved and, you know, they were right there any time that they thought they could be of assistance, they were right there asking to go to the calls. The Framingham Police Department provides the jail diversion clinicians with some office space, a telephone, uh, and a police radio, and a uh, Nextel phone. And th the phone and the radio allow the clinicians to have immediate access to our personnel, and, and more importantly, they allow uh, our officers on the street to immediately contact a clinician, wh whether it be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the morning. Th they will have instant access to a trained clinician um, to be able to consult with that clinician uh, in dealing with mental illness or, or in, in receiving some advice or some counseling on, on how to handle a particular situation. In addition to that, we're able to now offer victim counseling for victims of crimes. Through, we get referrals through our detective bureau. Um, so if individuals have come in, they've been assaulted, they've been raped, then in need of support services, we'll deliver services to that individual. Another offshoot of the program is the death notification. Um, program. Since the program's inception, it's now become policy at the department that um, clinicians accompany police officers when they do a death notification. And in most cases, we stay with the individual after the officer has gone and help them get ready for services, help them notify other family members. Sometimes it's just a matter of making them a cup of tea. But we're able to provide services for people in the greatest time of need. There are a lot of factors that come into play that ensure the success of the jail diversion program, but the, the most important factor, I think, is that it fulfills an important need. Police officers are always going to be charged with responding to mental illness calls in the community, and the jail diversion program provides them with a tool to, to better address uh, a segment of the population that they're required to serve and to better respond to calls that are coming in on a daily basis. Through the jail diversion program, we now have access to a, a vast array of mental health resources that as police we, we never knew existed. We've received a tremendous amount of positive feedback about the Framingham Jail Diversion Program. We've received a great number of cards and phone calls from individuals whose lives or family members' lives have been directly impacted by our services. It's most touching for me when individuals in the community recognize that it, this is a police-based program and they see that the police department has embraced this. It's easier for people to see that clinicians would want to help people in the community, but when they see that the police department really cares enough about its citizens to have this service available, that feedback is the most touching and, and most significant for me. By me referring people off to the hospital, to treatment through a clinician, 
with a gel diversion partner in my car and at the scene, it creates a powerful message. We set a cultural tone for the department, and this is the way policing should be going. And anybody that wants to say that this is uh, group hug, touchy-feely, we don't want to call criminal behavior, criminal behavior has this wrong. This is tough on crime, but it's compassionate criminal justice. This is, this is what we're about. That is our slogan, that is our theme, and that is, is really our driving philosophy. We want to deliver to the individuals that we serve in this community compassionate justice. So it, it may not be an arrest. Um, it may end up in a, as a result of the intervention in, in a more appropriate mental health referral. The jail diversion program is probably one of the most outstanding examples of a win-win-win project that I've ever experienced in my career. It was great for the police because we gave them a new tool that allows them to be more effective with people who are emotionally disturbed and saves their resources for more uh, police activities. It was great for our crisis clinicians because it enabled us to be right where people are hurting and to be there in a very safe way because we're in the company of the police. And most importantly, it enables people who are having emotional distress or psychiatric disturbance to actually get the help they need rather than find themselves tangled up in the criminal justice system. Uh, after having them ride around with the police officers, it's amazing the difference it makes out here. It makes it a lot easier for us. It takes a lot of the stress out of our hands. A clinician is able to look at the situation, realize there might be a mental health problem, and get them the proper treatment rather than tie up the court system and rather than tie us up. Because these clinicians are available, it allows the police officer to avoid unnecessary reports, unnecessary arrests, time wasted at calls. It allows you to get back on the street where you belong, answering emergency calls that require police expertise and not mental health expertise. The difference from when they were here, when they were not here before, and the time they're here now, uh, it's night and day. They're just part of the program, the regular routine, and they uh, they do a fantastic job. Yeah, I'll make the ball to be in row 1-H shortly. Uh, again, we'll be in the other side. Okay, who's taking the number on this one? 